So I have a lot of emotions and feelings towards the club. I'm also a very practical person, you know, and when you become a manager, you understand that you don't manage your own club, you, the club that you say is your club forever. And obviously I've been on a, um, a different path since I left Chelsea. But to come back in a time where um, the club have asked me to come and take the role, of course that's the most important thing, but also with a belief that I can come and help the calls in this period to the end of the season. So I'm, I'm delighted to get that opportunity and I want to be you know, I'm thankful for that to the people that have decided to give me that opportunity. I'm confident in myself. I have a good understanding of the, the squad. Of course, I've worked with a lot of them before, but also the, the training ground, the stadium, the fans, what Chelsea fans want. And I'll do my utmost in the, this period coming to give them what they want with my own hard work. Have you been told that this is strictly until the end of the season, regardless of what happens on the pitch? Um, no, but I think the role and the um, explanation of my role speaks for itself in the period that I'm here for. So on that term, I'm not getting anywhere ahead of myself. I want to do the best, best possible role I can, I can um, in, in a way that I can impact the club in the best way in this period. And after that, we'll see what happens. Because you'll be aware, obviously, um, Roberto Di Matteo, when he led the team to Champions League glory, he stayed on. Uh, is that... An incentive for you? Um, I, don't, I don't think it's worth speaking about you know past moments. You know, um, Roberto did an incredible job and stayed on. That's a different part of Chelsea's history. Um, and for me, um, in, in simple terms, it won't be my decision as such. Um, so again, I don't want to jump forward to that. And I understand I'm probably going to get asked that question a lot and, and asked a series of questions. I, I've got my eyes wide open, I expect those questions. But the important thing for me is to kind of park that to the side and focus on the job in hand for me. And I'm very excited to do that, along with the, the staff that I will be working with and the players that I will be working with, because I was at the game um, on Tuesday night. I know there's a lot of talent in this squad, not just the players that played on Tuesday, but generally I'm excited to work with that talent and, and, and help them. And that's why I'm here. And the two key areas, I suppose, how do you manage the fact that it is quite a big squad of players and also maybe the goal scoring problems are those two areas in particular and somewhere you can feel you can improve? Well yeah I, I hope so I mean it's um, modern day football has big squads and I understand that Chelsea might be at the, the top end of that I, I remember being here before and I had lots of difficult decisions of really good players and good people that you have to tell you're not involved this week and part of the job is to try and manage that situation and make every player feel included um, maybe in the beginning going into this with it being a short term that, that's a positive thing for me because everyone can have a clean slate as such right now and show in training and show what they can do and be competitive in training and a competitive nature that will then cross over to the pitch that's the good thing about a squad you push each other and I'll try and manage that um, in terms of the goal scoring um, there's no genius answer for a coach to explain to you about scoring goals to a point you can set up the structure of a team, work to get your, the, the team in a dominant area to pitch a lot. And again, we saw that against Liverpool, a lot of good chances. Um, so all I'll be here is to, to work with repetition on the training ground, to work in, speak, in terms of speaking to the players. Fortunately, it was one of the parts of my game that was a big part of my game. And that's not me comparing anything, that's just understanding the mindset that it takes to be that uh, uh, aggressive cold-hearted nature to want to score goals and I know the players will have that it's just a, it's just a case of trying to direct that in the right way One player you played a key role in I guess developing and, and he excelled in that time was Mason, Mason Mount sorry uh, what have you made of, of his situation with the club at, at the moment and I, I wonder how much influence can you have over such situations that could impact on, on the future of the football club? I don't know enough about it to, to talk about it and I think it would probably be wrong for me to, to, to delve into anything other than um, Mason has, has always been a fantastic player for me from my days at Derby and the impact he had there to when I came back to Chelsea and it's with absolute pleasure that I've watched him amongst others that I, I coached in that period in terms of you know Rhys James um, people like Tammy Abraham and Tamori and, and others if I missed them to, to have gone on and I've been huge players here or elsewhere so that's great but with Mason um, I know he's had a few slight injury problems maybe uh, so I understand that so the important thing would be to, be to speak to him find out where he's at but I know what I get from Mason um, so in that terms I, I just want to see him perform on the pitch and of course we have a good relationship so we'll talk a lot I think he's a huge player for Chelsea and, and has been in his time here so I look forward to, to talking to him more and what's your thought process for, 
for picking a team? Quite a, a tight turnaround, I guess, for the Wolves team. Yeah, and um, I've been thinking about it a lot. Um, this morning, working, speaking to people that are going to be helping me to to do this job. Um, so I have my idea about where I want to go. And um, uh, as I say, I watched the team and credit to, to Bruno who took the team. I want to say credit to Graham Potter, who I think I don't know that well, but everything I see about him is a good man and a very good coach. And sometimes maybe for whatever reason, things don't align, don't work, whatever. I've been in that situation personally. So so there's nothing that I will do or look, that will look backwards other than things that can help us with a view to how we move forward. But I'll obviously have my own ideas. Just finally, can you confirm your coaching staff is there? I can't at this point, unfortunately. <laughs> hey, Liv, BLP. Hi, Frank. Hi. Um, just firstly, what, what is the target? It's obviously such a short period of time between now and the end of the season, two huge games against Real Madrid coming up. What is the target for you, for this team, for now until the end of the season? I think to, to attempt to install the highest level of confidence I can with the group, to, for them to exert and show a level of passion of playing for Chelsea and, and an urgency and energy in their game. I think those are sort of like principles that I really want to talk to the players about. And in terms of targets, we want to win as many games as we can. It's, it's, you know, it's the simplest answer you're going to get. It's more complicated than that. But at the same time, I think um, you know, there, there are big games ahead of us and every game is hard. Premier League's hard, Champions League, of course, is hard. But we have to have a belief in the players we have in this squad. I've got a huge belief in them from the outside and I'll tell them that today. And so it's how can we um, take that in, in the right direction and then of course we want to win games. Obviously when, when you got let go a couple of years ago, you sort of got Chelsea through the group stages of the Champions League and didn't get the chance to take them in the knockout stages. So do you feel like now this is your chance to have that experience of managing Chelsea in the knockout stages of the Champions League? Well, it, well it's certainly a chance um, with, the, with the two games you have coming up. Um, I'm not naive, Real Madrid is a huge football club with obviously the the current Champions League winners, so a fantastic team. So I'm not going to sit here and make all these, you know, crazy talk about that. And then what might be in that difficult semi-final that maybe after that and a final that's far away. And my job is to go step by step. But of course, having played a part and coached in the Champions League here for two years, the first year we were here, where we we got through the group and lost at Bayern Munich. The second year, where we got through the group well, and of course I left, and the club went on to, to a fantastic achievement. So. Um, those things are sort of in the past for me, but of course I'm you know, excited to be in, in fighting in that competition again because it's the best. And you mentioned the fans and how important the fans are. Um, do you have a message for the Chelsea fans out there? Because I know obviously a lot of them will be very delighted that you're back at the club managing for, for a second time. So do you have a message for them? Um, well, I'm, I'm very thankful for the ones that are delighted. If there are some that are not <laughs> delighted, um, they, they can know that I will uh, want my utmost um, to, to get the team to where I want it to be and give them a team that they're proud of. But I don't think I need, I don't want this to sound too casual, but I don't think I need to speak too much about my relationship with the Chelsea fans. I played here for 13 years, I coached here, I had a lot of incredible moments and some difficult moments because that's football. Um, but from the moment I joined this club many years ago, I kind of remember the year almost. Um, they've been a huge support to me and I'm forever thankful for that. So if I can be here, if I can help this club um, and we can come together and we can fill those days at Stamford Bridge and nights at Stamford Bridge and fill an, an energy in this period of the season, then that's what I'm here to try and do. And just finally, I know it's obviously looking ahead because obviously you've got Wolves and Real Madrid before the Brighton game, um, but what's it going to be like for you again stepping out at Stamford Bridge there? Um, really exciting, <laughs> really exciting. I was there the other on Tuesday night and um, it's the first time I've been back since I, uh, I left the club previously um, and it, it was an, for different reasons but it was an amazing buzz to be back at, at Stamford Bridge. My seat will be slightly different um, <laughs> against Brighton but at the same time I can't take away the basic feeling of excitement inside for that and I'll be very proud and proud to manage this club you know it's, uh, it's something that I don't have to, to harp on about too much but I look forward to the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, move on to John, BBC. Hi Frank, how are you? Hi, good, thanks. Can you explain how, how it all came about when you got the phone call? Was it a surprise when you, when you got the call? Uh, of course a surprise in terms of, you know, you, you, you never know a decision the club is going to make. There's been lots of change in the Premier League this year and of course you're aware of that. And I've been um, particularly enjoying my period of time at home. It's one of the things as a, as a manager and coach where the game can be fluid at times that when you get periods to be at home, you, you can really throw yourself into your family and my children and my wife, etc. and things I had to probably put to the side by being up in Everton for a year. 
Um, so that was a surprise because you know I've been pretty happy in that that position. But when I spoke to uh, Paul and Lawrence um, in the last 24 to 48 hours, um, and they put forward what what this is now and what it's ended up being, it was obviously um, for me, as I said in the beginning, a decision that was. Um, not simple. It's Chelsea Football Club can't be a simple decision. You have to take things into account. Personally, what it means to your heart, what it means to your head. Um, but that decision I've obviously came to. And you've, you've obviously had some big challenges already in your managerial career. But, but how big a challenge is this one? Especially, you know, you've got what, five days, six days to try and prepare a team for, for Real Madrid. Yeah, it's a big challenge, um, but but aren't they all? You know, and uh, that's not just my own world of you know coming to Chelsea at the first time with a lot of young players in the transfer ban, Everton, everyone saw. Um, uh, that's my story. Every manager will have that story. Everything's a challenge. We're seeing how the Premier League is, so I have complete sympathy for all managers that maybe lose jobs, and move on, and and and, and also congratulations to the managers that had success because I know the work. So I'm ready just to put my work into this challenge that's in front of me and, and take it day by day. I've got a clear idea of what I want to do in this period. Um, but the, the biggest thing for me now is to be able to speak to the players and to fill them out on the grass and, and, and try and impact them. Are you surprised where Chelsea are at the moment, 11th in the Premier League, given that you've spoken about the squad and the quality that is in the squad? Um, I don't think football can surprise you really like that. Um, personally, I think because it's such a competitive league, it's, I don't think it's my position to to comment on the whys and, and the hows that the club is where it is now. It's my position to try, my position to try and find the right uh, energy, the right results to to try and move us into a more positive direction. Because this is Chelsea Football Club. We know we don't want to be in the 11th position, but the reality is that where we are, there's been change, there's been transition, there's been um, change in the squad. We have, I think, there's mentioned before a lot of talent in this squad. And it's very clear and very obvious, and you look at stories around the Premier League and its history, those things take a bit of time, you know, and everyone will try and work in the right direction. So I think some things have to be understandable, but some things you want to get there quickly because you want to work and make it show. So if I can play my part in that, then, then great. Well, good luck. Enjoy it. Thank you. OK, we've got two more for this section, starting with Jerry Haters. Frank. Hi, Jerry. Welcome back. Thank you. Um, hand on heart, do you think when you left two years ago, did you ever think you'd be back in that seat? And is there an element of unfinished business in when you now? Um, I, I didn't think I'd never be in this seat. I'm, I'm a confident person. I want to work hard. I understand the game. Um, and this club, obviously, I have a big connection with. But if I'm honest, it wasn't my thought one day I'll be back as Chelsea manager because my job is to be as good a manager as I can be. Um, so it, and I, and I can't, it, it would be useless to sit there and think about what might be down the line. So it wasn't the first part of my mind, no. In terms of unfinished business, I don't quite see it like that. You know, I was here for that period of time. I look back on it with, with really good feelings about the positives. And when I reflected all the things, I thought maybe I could have done that a little bit better. I think most managers will be the same. And now I'm here in a, in a different period, a different era. And I, I just want to do as well as I can. So I don't, it doesn't, that unfinished, unfinished business sounds a little bit Hollywood. You know, it's like you're looking for a, um, a, a great line. I want to work, you know, and of course I want to help this club as much as I can. Okay, we're going to finish with Sam. Hey Frank. Hi um, Simon. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I just, just wondered, because you were a player when interns came in, like the Birds mm. Gus, and they made a big impact. Mm. Have you learned, is there anything you can take from what you experienced as a player from them that you can, you can tell the players yourself? as a coach now that you're interim too that, that, that will help yeah may, may, maybe maybe because I think I've got real uh, fond and good memories of, of both the <coughs> managers you mentioned um, and we had some more I think but, but in terms of it, the, the success that I personally found yeah. of Robbie which is obviously the Champions League I saw how he affected the, the group um, and the personal relationships that he had and obviously the football instincts that he had and in Gus's own way, similarly, he had great personal touch, he had a great football brain. Um, so those little things that I remember from those periods, of course, I would try and affect them because this is a, a job that's in hand, it's in front of me now. And so I'll, I'll be, I'll be um, stupid to not rely on some things that obviously I felt were good, but I also have to do the things that I think are right now. So, sure. you know, both together. And I know you talk about targets, you can't talk too much, but in terms of the league, how important could it be for Chelsea to be in European football, even though it's not top four is obviously probably out of the question, but mm. the less competitions, I think you played in the Europa League, for example. It's really important. Um, 
but at the same time we're in this situation now where we would all love to get there but the the reality is we have to win games to give ourselves a fighting chance of being there yeah. so I, I really don't want I really don't want to go there at this point but I understand your point because Chelsea has a history of being in Europe but at the same time here as I mentioned whatever challenges there have been this season um, I'm not here to talk about them I'm here to go what, what, what maximum impact can I have from now until the end of the season and of course we'll, I could set high bars for myself now they'll be useless anyway it's more important about how I work ok that completes that section so cameras off please <laughs>